release the Quacken! Good morning fellow game designers, Ron here with Lame Duck Studios. And today we're going to look at setting up our animations for our character. Yay! Alright, so we're inside of our scene here with Ma and Maya. And our elf is looking great. What I'm going to do is hide that hair piece because we don't need that. So, uh, hair layer and hair skeleton, we'll get rid of those. And before we do anything to this, uh, let's go ahead and save this. So I'm at elf dude, you know, underscore 23. I'm going to resave this out. So I'm going to hit save as. Since we're at a point where we're happy with our elf and we don't really want to make any additional modifications to it, I'm going to switch off from my usual convention of numbering and we're going to change this to the bind pose. So I'll say bind pose because I know that this one is the one that is good to go. If I need to go there and work on it, that's the one it's going to be. So I'll say save as. Now one thing we should do to the bind pose is make some adjustments. Now you can do this pretty much in any animation that you need to have this particular feature. Since I, I know I'm almost always going to need a, to bend the fingers, I'm going to do this here. So that way I don't have to set it up every time. So on the fingers, when we start animating, we're going to start moving one joint at a time. And each finger has, you know, three primary joints. This last joint doesn't really do anything. But that means that I have to animate each individual joint since we're going to be doing FK. That takes time. So to ease my burden, I'm going to make it so that when I rotate one joint and a finger, it rotates all of its children as well. To do that, we're going to create a relationship or a connection. So go up to Window, come down to General Editor, and then go down to Connection Editor. It's going to bring up this wonderful connection window. I'm going to go ahead and grab my index finger. It's a good place to start. And you can see there are two sides. We have a left and a right. Now you might not see this exact setup, but to make sure that we're all looking at the same thing, we only want to see what's keyable. So I'm going to go up to the left display. And then you're going to have some things that are checked here. Just go ahead and uncheck all of them. And then we're going to show uh, readable. Okay. Same thing on the right. And if yours looks like mine, you should be fine, right? So show readable. Show inputs, you know, it's fine. And actually, readable would be fine here, too. It wouldn't really matter. But what's going to be on the left is the thing that's controlling the thing on the right. So this is the output, this is the input. So I'm going to select this joint, reload left. I'm going to go down and select the next joint in the chain, so that's the middle knuckle here. And I'll go reload right. So you can see left index 1, left index 2, so left finger, right finger. I have a separate tutorial for this, so if you want to just jump over there and do the same thing, it's this, it's the exact same thing. If you've already seen it, you know what to do. Uh, go ahead and uh, knock yourself out, as they say. But with these both in here, I'm going to open up the left rotations and the right rotations. And this is where orienting the joints becomes handy, since we know that rotating this with, with uh, the Z being the down, you can see Z being updated over here, I know that I only have to create a relationship between the Z's. So what I'll do is I'll select this Z. And you can see it already says, oh, you're grabbing that. Well, this is a rotation. So rotations and translations aren't really related here. I mean, you could create a relation if you wanted to. And then I'll grab the other Z. So now whenever I move this one, the other one bends. Look at that. That's cool. Rinse and repeat. I'm going to go ahead and grab the second knuckle. This one's going to be the new left because I want this one to control that one. So this one, reload left, grab the uh, ending knuckle here. Not the not the very end, but the second to the last. That'll be on my right. Rotate, rotate, Z, Z. I grab that. If I bend it, hey, look at that. Amazing. It's just rinse and repeat down the board, okay? Follow those steps. So grab the knuckle you want to control, load it on the left. Knuckle you want to be controlled on the right. There's some other terminology. Like you, you could be like parent and child or whatever. 
I'll open up the rotations. Z and Z. All right, so now I want this knuckle to be the controller. So I hit the left. This one to be the controlled or the puppet. Load the right. Bink, bink. Always test it. A. Rinse and repeat. Slowing down over here for the thumb, just because it does bend a little bit different. For the thumb, we hit F to frame up on that. When we wet bend our thumb, we almost only ever bend our thumb to make a connection to the fingers. Like if you're doing like a peace sign, bending this finger down to the thumb, you know. Or if you're doing um, like closing a fist. So I'm going to move my thumb to see how it's going to bend when I close a fist. So I'm going to move it into fist closing position. So there and maybe here. So my Z is my down. And you see how it's at an angle? That means we're going to have to turn the thumb at some point. I'm going to take the thumb. Let's go ahead and hit reload left. I'll grab the next knuckle up, reload right. So my thumb is going to rotate on the Z. So we establish mm -hmm. that. And for this, I'm going to do the Z as well. I think that'll be the smoothest. Yep. All right, next knuckle up, load left. Next one up, load right. Z and Z. Good enough. Just be aware that whenever we rotate our thumb, because it is at an angle, we'll have to change its position. Because it's going to rotate downward, we'll just rotate it like that as well. Good enough. Close enough for this. All right, then go ahead and do your other hand. And go ahead and save your bind pose. That way it's always good. And then from here, I'm going to save it again as whatever animation I'm going to use. So the bind pose is always this key pose. So if I have to go back, I have it. Let's go do a save as. Once again, rename this. I'm going to do this one as the idle. So idle. And by doing that, I have a new file. If I have to make changes, I don't end up ruining the old one. So let's pose our character. We're going to be using what's called FK, or Forward Kinetics. That means I'm going to be rotating joints one at a time. It is the slower method, but it is one of the older methods, and that's tried, it's tried and true. You know, uh, If you wanted to be quicker, you could add IK handles, but that takes a bit of, uh, of time to set up, so we're not going to do that today. One key thing, you do not want to ever rotate your root joint. This is always going to be as it is. But like everything else, there's always an exception to the rule, which is if you have to rotate him, you know, 180 degrees so he's facing the other way, then then sure. But for the most, most part, you don't want to ever rotate this because it would mess up how he is in game. But for this, we can actually rotate the pelvis. So I'm going to actually tilt him in the direction that I want. So I'm going to set up an idle stance. So what I recommend you doing is checking out YouTube or you know Google, whatever stance you want your character to be in. If you can't find something you like, record yourself. So you can see here I happen to have a recording and I'm in my uh, pose here. Actually, this is for fighting and stuff. 
but it's alright. So I'm going to actually be here, and at the very beginning of this, where I'm not quite moving, you can see my feet are in a position that I wanted to be in. My hands are not quite where I wanted to be, and I changed my hand position. But for the most part, this is the stance I'm going to be in. So looking at that, my back foot is my right foot. Let's go to my elf here. And my hips are almost like 90 degrees forward. So I'm going to rotate, grab that hip bone, rotate my character about like so. Actually, I'm not quite 90 degrees. I'm more like more like that. My hips are not exactly square, but they're not exactly uh, forward. Or, you know, sometimes I think I'm getting senile. I can't quite think. But it's all right. You know what I meant. I'll move this hip back a little bit, tilt it just a tad. And all I'm doing is just moving the joints. Now as you're setting these up, you want to make sure that the character looks like he's balanced. He looks like he would fall over at this point. So this one's got to come up some. I'm going to bend that knee down. Make him look like he's sinking into his weight. Take this one back some more. Check the alignment. Tilt that foot up just a tad. And if the ankle is going to be hitting the ground, it would be tilted a little bit, like so. And this hip needs to be, but the pelvis needs to be back some, so I'm just going to rotate him back. All right, for the pelvis, that's probably fine. I'll go to a side view here, take a look at my feet position on the ground. So by the looks of things, this leg needs to be more forward. Now you could tilt him back, but if you look at the uh, video here of my position, I'm actually, my hips look like they're pretty much parallel, right? They're, they're horizontal. And I'm not really tilted forward or back. They're nice and even. And my weight is dis uh, distributed. So I'm actually leaning onto the back foot a little bit but I tend to take a, uh, a divided stance, a pretty even stance. So what I'm going to do with this guy is kind of the same thing. I'm sort of emulating this stance. I'm going to grab these, make an adjustment, adjust the foot. And I want him to be like he's touching the ground, so I'm going to grab the pelvis, and I will move him to the ground here. Now this error or this warning is saying, hey, I can't worry at the joints because they're bound. Whenever you move a joint or translate a joint and it has um, rotations that have been frozen or, or locked, it tries to auto snap back to position. So that's what it's trying to do here, but it can't. It's okay, we don't need it to. I'm gonna put him down to where the back foot's touching the ground here. And then I'm gonna adjust that front foot. So move the hip up a little bit more, I'll move the knee back a little bit more. That's probably good enough. I'm going to be a little OCD and just kind of pull that back. That stance looks awkward, but hey. Alright, let's move the 
upper body. I turn him forward. Uh, not 100% forward, like about there. And then upper torso. It's probably fine. Now, I'm, for my character, because I'm doing sort of a fighting stance as his idol, I'm going to have him not quite with his hands up. I'll put them down to his side. Now, if he had a sword or something, that'd be kind of all right. But I'm going to do this. Put this hand down to the side here. Bring it slightly up. This one's more toward the back. Relax his arms a little bit. He's so stiff. Kind of like cardboard, you know? Kind of bend that knee some. Relax this posture just a little bit. Check him from the front, make sure he looks like he's balanced here. One thing you can't see in the video is my uh, feet distribution. So. And to really carry that weight, he needs to be tilted forward just a tad. And as you can see, I'm looking at reference images and I'm going back to the model. And I always recommend looking at references. Every artist looks at references all the way back from way in the old days when they were carving people out of marble to now. We still look at references because they're our best guide for this kind of thing. Okay. All right, let's really take these shoulders here. I'll kind of relax them a little bit. Let's rotate that. Now, of course, my reference does not have me with my hands to the side, but I'm kind of winging it. Now, your hands would not be totally, you know, pitched like this where their your fingers are all tight. They would be relaxed, so we're going to have to go through and relax the fingers. The reason we set this up is to make it so much easier to bend the fingers. Yeah. however you want his hands to be, whatever posture. I'm going to go ahead and just grab these and just rotate them together. He might not have like a fully engaged hand. Maybe it's only partially closed. And I'll get that thumb working. Same dealio with this one. Grab those knuckles. I'll do a partial close. And then adjustment on that thumb. Okay, so this is all the first part, like getting him in an initial pose, right? But now we actually have to do the whole thing with animation. If you haven't done the animation primer, make sure you check out that video. That way you understand what we're going to be doing. But once we have our uh, character position and setup, oh, I didn't check his head. Make sure I do the head. 
Uh, that should be facing forward here. A little bit of a tilt in his neck. Let's uh, untilt. Feeling tilted, bruh. Okay, cool. Uh, what we're gonna do is, once we have the pose done, we're gonna key it onto our timeline here. But we just set up a whole bunch of joints, right? And what we should have been doing is keying as we went. Since we didn't do that, there's a faster way. I'm gonna select the root joint, go up to selection, go down to hierarchy. I'm just gonna grab all the joints. I'm gonna press the S key. Uh, make sure you're on the uh, position for one on your timeline. So the first frame, hit S. That'll key all, so that will key everything in the list, even things that never changed, okay? Any, be aware that anything that doesn't change is called a static channel. Static channels will, will actually remove those when we export it, so don't worry. So there is our first keyed position. And for our game, we'll assume that we're running at, uh, we'll do 60 frames a second. So let's go down here and we'll say that one second of animation for this character is 60 frames. So that's 60. I'm going to come down here, type in 60. I'm going to go all the way to the end. And the first frame and the last frame on this animation are going to be the same because the animation is going to loop. So that means that when the animation starts, he'll be in a position. It'll get all the way up to the end. He'll do something and then he'll go back down to his original position, which is here. But it'll actually end up flipping at the end of it. So you'll see. I'm going to go here, press S, key that in. Sometimes it's picky. Let me try that again. There we go. So first frame and last frame are the same. And now I'm going to do something different in the middle. OK? To make life simpler, I'm going to turn on uh, auto key. So auto key is down here. And my auto key is almost always on by default because I use it all the time. But it's this little icon with the two arrows that kind of loop around each other and put a little plus sign in the middle. That's called auto key. What auto key does is anytime I make a change after I set the first key, is it automatically updates the new key. But I have to have at least one set before it works. So since I have these two set in there, if I make any changes now, it will auto key. So if I grab, let's say, his shoulders, and I just want to do like a little breathing animation, I'll grab that shoulder, get that rotation. And you see there's no key here, but when I go ahead and move that a little bit, let it go, a new key drops. And if I hit play, the arm goes up and down. So slightly up, slightly down. Okay, do the same thing for the other arm. Now these are not going to be perfect. Uh, just make sure that when you set the next key that you're on the same frame uh, as you were before, or at least you're on the frame that you want to be on. This arm doesn't start, doesn't get to its ending position until about 28. And since we're doing a breathing animation and that's going to be pretty much even across the board, I'm going to go back to frame 28 here. And I will make my adjustment. Cool. I'll also adjust him up a little bit. Maybe not so much. Since we tend to breathe from our diaphragm, I'll just move this back just a little bit. There. Little bit of a breathing animation going on. If you want perfection, of course, you have to dial in some secondary motion. Secondary motion is motion that happens because of something else. So, for example, as the, as the chest fills up with air, that causes, you know, your shoulders to flex, right? That's a, that's a secondary motion. Or if I were to swing my arm, you know, at the shoulder, my hand might, might bend a little bit, you know, that action that is not intended is the secondary motion. So as the character is breathing in, you can see as he's breathing in, 
some other things might happen. Like maybe right around here as the breathing starts, we get a little bit of bend in the elbow. So no bend, and then the bend happens, and then the bend kind of goes away. And then here, maybe I'll also do the fingers. Just a very subtle expansion of all the fingers. Same thing on this hand. Let's do a very subtle expansion. All right, now another thing that might happen is as he's breathing or whatever, the position of his hips might change. But if you do that, you have to consider that his feet might not change. To do this, I'm going to add in a guide so I can see where my legs should be. For that, I'm just going to add in a box. I'm going to size this box up to the foot here. I'm going to hold down the V key and snap it to the foot joint, little ball joint there. Come here, you. So this is going to be a target for my foot. Do the same thing for this back foot. I'm going to switch over to um, Local rotations, hold W and click, go up to the object option. That'll give me an arrow that's in the direction of my object. And you'll see why these are kind of useful. Let's say as he breathes, he changes his hip position, like his hips change height a little bit. So I'm going to sink him into the ground just a tad. Make sure I'm at the correct frame for that, so frame 28. And actually, instead of sinking him into the ground, because he's you know, taking a breath, he might be standing up a little bit more. I'm going to raise him up just a little bit. So I'm going to go up ever so slightly. Go to my side view here. You can see. Just a very subtle raise in the feet there. But as that happens, the knees would straighten out a little bit, the hips would straighten out a little bit. So I'm going to rotate these down just ever so slightly. I'm going to rotate this forward just ever so slightly. I'm matching, I'm using this guide to make sure my foot stays within that box. Same thing with this back one. Oops. Come on, you. And just to make sure that I'm in the right position. So at frame one, it's there. As I go to frame 28, you can see the foot is there. So from here to there. And then 
as I move through, you can see the foot doesn't slide as much, but it does shift like he's pushing on. And that's one of those things you have to kind of spend some time on. But in here on the front view, you can see around my perspective, and it because I'm using this guide, you know, this brick as a guide to see where my foot's position is, it's helping me line up the animation between them. You see the back foot is still sliding, I have to go back and fix that. I'll jump into my side view on frame one. Again, be sure that you're on the correct frame, but from frame one to my frame 28 in here, you can see how it shifts. It goes up and that way some. So I need to make sure that this foot it stays about this height, this depth, and this position. So. So that is close enough. I don't think we're going to notice that shifting too much as we, as we're standing here, we're not really looking at his feet as much, right? So that should do it. So we're going to save our work because this is our idle pose. We'll save idle. And now let's go ahead and export this and bring it into Unreal. To export the animation, we only need the skeleton. So go ahead and select the skeleton. So at the root joint, I'm going to go up to File, come down to Export Selection, and we name this uh, Elf Dude. So SK underscore uh, Elf Dude. There he is. This is the idol. Scroll down, we want to make sure the animation is turned on, so we'll check that. And then for our bake animation, so this is going to record the animation into the skeleton for us. It's going to be from frame 1 to 60. You can see we have frame 1 to frame 60 here. Now, most of the time on a looping animation, you drop the last frame, but for this, it's okay for him to take kind of a pause between the two different frames. Because what's going to happen is once we get to 1 and we go to 60, because 60 and 1 are the same, we'll have two frames of the same thing, which will create the illusion that he's taking a pause, that he's stopping, and then he's going to start again, which is okay, because you would on a breath. You take a breath, and then you'd hold it, and you exhale. So that makes sense. We'll hit Export. It's going to do all that, and then we'll bring him into Unreal. So go ahead and open up Unreal. And I'll grab my Elf game. All right. Now that we're inside of Unreal, go to Animations. We have the animations in here yet, but we'll go ahead and import. Go down to my skeletal mesh here, skeleton uh, classes. Elf dude, idle. Okay, open that. As it comes in, it's going to ask us what do we want. We actually want this to not bring the mesh. So where it says skeletal mesh, we want to uncheck import mesh. And then we're going to go down to uh, the options here and we're going to choose the skeleton. Now where we have a hair skeleton and the actual elf skeleton. So make sure you choose the elf. 
and then hit import. There it is. If I were to drag this right into the scene there, and it's simulate. Hey, it's working. Now it's not hooked up, it's not going to do anything for us just yet, but we'll take care of that uh, in the next tutorial. Actually, we're going to set up the, the walk cycle first, and then we'll connect the idle and the walk together. Okay, go ahead and save your work, and I will see you in the next one. Hey guys, thanks for checking out my channel. Misty and I both thank you. If you've enjoyed the video you just watched, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. Also, if you have any uh, comments or suggestions for future videos, make sure you leave them down in the comments. I upload new content every, every Sunday, and I uh, release content every Wednesday. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, I do have a Patreon. Um, get content early. I also have official merch, Lame Duck Studio merch. It does exist. They do exist. So make sure you stick around for anything new, and I will see you next time.